don't worry about it. We've got this taken care of. We've got new procedures. It's going to be different now. It's never different. You haven't changed. And you keep referring to these policies, these new procedures. We haven't seen that. We're not even allowed to have access to it. And we have absolutely no reason to trust you because you haven't behaved in a manner that's trustworthy. You can't even, as we sit here, tell me that people who intentionally, knowingly, deliberately violated the civil rights of American citizens, that, that they were fired or that they had their security clearance stripped. Now, in 2022, FBI and other agencies searched Americans' communications over 200,000 times, only 16 of which were evidence of a crime only searches that returned information. I'd like to ask you to, to give a, a yes or a no uh, answer to these questions. Were the three related batch queries consisting of over, over 23,000 separate queries relating to the events of January 6th, were those evidence of a crime only queries, yes or no? Uh, I don't know the answer to that. The answer, what is, I can't, what, the answer is no. I, what I do I, know the answer. The answer what, is no. Were there 141 okay. I, queries for the activists arrested in connection with the uh, George Floyd protests uh, here in Washington, D.C., evidence of a crime only queries? Those were non compliant queries. Uh, and again, they all predate the reforms that we've put in place, which, which before echo we. other reforms that ever, other FBI directors which, have told me about to, every darn year. If How about I may. 19,000 donors to a political campaign? The answer there is no. What about the query for a sitting member of Congress? The answer there is no. What about the query involving a U.S. Senator, which for all we know could be any one of us? The answer is no. And so what, what does that tell me? Well, what I'm hearing and what these data points all point to is that a warrant requirement or prohibition relating to quote unquote evidence of a crime only queries would not have been uh, something that would have prevented any of the most egregious examples of the abuse that we've seen under Section 702. So the FBI is already required to obtain a court order in some circumstances before accessing the contents of Americans' communications in the context of 702. They're already required for that in some circumstances. Since 2018, how many times has that requirement been triggered according to government reporting? Do you know? Are you talking about the so-called F2? Yes. Yeah, I've, uh, how many times has it been triggered? Yes. I think it, I think there have been two instances where I think is maybe the number. 100, 103, 103 times yeah. it's been triggered. And out of those 103 identified times, uh, the FBI should have obtained a court order. How many times did the FBI actually obtain one? Do you know? But that I think the answer is none. Zero. So you're telling me that the FBI has completely ignored the limited court order requirement that it's already subjected to. You have the audacity to come here, and you told us that getting, uh, adding a warrant requirement to 702, even for queries involving U.S. persons on U.S. soil, that that would amount to some sort of unilateral disarmament. That, you have a lot of gall, sir. This is disgraceful. The Fourth Amendment requires more than that, and you know it. I know every single time for centuries even prior to the founding of this country, there were similar protections built into the laws of the United Kingdom before we became a country. Even then, the government was making the same darn argument you're making today, which is, it's too hard. This would make it hard for the government. It's why we have a constitution, sir, and you must comply with it. Mr. Chairman, may I respond briefly? When you ask why are things different this time, I would point you again to the findings of the court and the department themselves, both of which have not been shy about identifying some of the same instances that you cited in our colloquy, they themselves have observed the effectiveness of the reform, which is why the uh, pre versus post date of the reforms becomes very significant. So that's number one. Second, second uh, as to your claims about constitutionality, I would point you back to what the case law actually shows on this subject, which is that no court has found 702 in its current form to be uh, unconstitutional, and every court to have looked at it has found it to be constitutional. Well, and last point. How lucky last for you, point, because no one has standing to do that. No one knows when they're being surveilled. Yeah, that, that is not an argument, last, sir. Last point, Mr. Chairman, uh, is that in some of the instances, and you went through a number in your uh, questions, in some of the instances in particular that I know about, uh, those are instances where the queries were run in order to get to 
a public official, a member of Congress, to warn them about foreign influences targeting yes, them. And a warrant would not have enabled that. We yeah. call those consent searches. And consent searches do not require a warrant, sir. And you know that. There is nothing that you have done that is not entirely within the FBI's control and supervision. You're asking me to believe something that is not believable because your, your agency has made it unbelievable. And I refuse to accept it.